Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gonzo Airsoft. I'm Major Klanger. This video is the second video in my series following the Arctic Thunder Milsim game that was played at Airsoft Edinburgh. If you've not watched episode one, click on the annotation below and that will explain all of the uh, background, the scenario and the rules that we're playing by. And it will make the footage that you're about to see and the following videos uh, much easier to understand. So hopefully now that you've all done this, I'll explain that the mission that you can see going on at the moment follows myself and probably about 20 players from our side have moved up to the anti-aircraft system on the uh, right hand side or the right hand flank of the uh, site. Both teams appear to be attempting to move missiles from the ammo dump and install them onto the AA. Our team have quite quickly made it up towards the AA which is set in a clearing and the other, our other team have been split off and are attempting to retrieve the uh, missiles. However, the ammo dump which the missiles are situated is at a closer to the uh, enemy's uh, HQ and spawn and we suspect that they hold that currently. What we're attempting to do at this point is just secure the AA and prevent the enemy getting a, a foothold because if they can then moving up the missiles will probably be quite a, a simple bit mission for them. Because the AA is out in the open, this is probably about the best line of defence we have. We've got a clear line of sight into anyone should they try to make it towards there. Over my right shoulder we've got a support gunner laying down some covering fire across into the tree line far beyond. He's calling out the target to me. I can't quite make him out. You got eyes? Right. Aha. On the left side there's a large bang. Now I don't know exactly what happened there but what I think happened is one of our players has got a underslung grenade launcher on the bottom of his rifle and he's got, he has a two stage uh, pyrotechnic which he'll pop in there. The first charge will send it flying and then the second will uh, hopefully explode killing the enemy. I, however I expect that just went off in one go. And whilst distracted by that, I get uh, pegged. I take a quick peek at my watch there. Uh, following the bleed out rules, uh, I need to know when I've been hit so when I can uh, bleed out and return back. Well, I've got a teammate coming to provide first aid. I rummage around in my top pocket and I uh, bandage drops at my foot which I kick over to him so he can get me back in the fight. The enemy team have got some pretty pink smoke which they've popped over at the, the far tree line. It looks like they're making good grounds on the, on the right hand side. Uh, we're in danger here of getting uh, flanked. Again. Cheers. Right, there's two or three just in the tree line there. Right. 
the footage that you see here uh, has been edited. Something that I noticed in the Milsim game is that the pace of play was quite a bit slower than on a, a normal pick up and play game. I think the ammo restrictions and the medic and uh, respawn rules uh, made for much more cautious play. People were um, more reluctant to spray and pray and also uh, tended to keep their heads down a little more, uh, not wanting that long walk back to the, the respawn if they had been isolated. So the footage here is, has been cut down from about 25 minutes and all. There's some more is there a pretty purple smoke this time on the left hand side. I take some shots over into the, the tree line beyond the rapier and uh, receive a volley in return. Uh, from the back there's a cry from uh, our commander, that's Rod, uh, te telling us to conserve our ammunition. And it's a good point, shooting speculative shots in a game like this doesn't won't pay off. You could just end up with an empty magazine and a, a walk back to the, the base. You gotta uh, play this more strategically. Fine here. So again, the commander's calling around, trying to work out how much ammunition that we have, see whether we can we can stick this out and hold out. Cheers. We get radio report from the left-hand side. It sounds like our guys aren't making good ground uh, towards the ammo dump. So. At this point, it looks like we just have to try and prevent the enemy right. from loading the, the missiles on. Uh, any chance of us retrieving the uh, missiles from the ammo dump seem to have been lost. Two or three people in the tree line there. I send down a couple of volleys and manage to get them to keep their heads down, but no hits there. That's a casualty falling back to our base from behind, followed by another. It means that things are probably starting to look a little ropey on this flank. And there's another hit. I can't tell which side that's from though.
How many of us are left up here? So I ask how many we've got left. The call comes back with probably about five or six of us. Things are beginning to look very shaky. Proving that it's sometimes better to be lucky than good. I spot and call the target on my 12, fire a single shot off to check range and uh, manage to ping him nicely on the head. And whilst I've done that, chap behind me is hit. I try to spin round but I'm too slow. Uh, this, our whole flank has been rolled up. We've been taken from behind roughly. I check the watch for the bleed out and end up bleeding out in the end. There was no one left to revive me back in. As I walk back to the respawn point, I see that uh, the enemy are loading on the rapier missiles. The Argentinians have set up their air defense. All we can do is, is fall back and try for the next objective. <laughs> 